This Fast Graphs demo number three will look at the Fast Graphs forecasting tools and review how to interpret and utilize them properly. There are two primary Fast Graphs forecasting tools. The first is the estimated earnings and return calculator, which we call the forecasting graph, and the second is the 10 year earnings yield estimator. When initially drawn, both of these tools default to and are therefore driven by the consensus of leading analysts reporting to Standard & Poor's Capital IQ. All the subscriber has to do is type in the stock symbol and hit the Go button and the Fast Graphs will automatically be drawn. It's important that the Fast Graphs subscriber understands that these are estimated earnings and return calculators and tools that simply are doing calculations based on these analyst estimates. As you will see a little later in the demo, there's an override function where the subscriber can add their own estimates if they disagree with the consensus estimates. The estimated earnings and return calculator is simply that, it's a calculator. Uh, it defaults, as we previously mentioned, to the consensus of leading analysts reporting to Standard & Poor's Capital IQ Corporation. There are actually three forecasts that happen in the estimated earnings and recurrent return calculator. First of all, the precise earnings number for the current fiscal year is given and plotted. Then a precise number for next year's estimate is added to that. You will notice the growth rate for this year's consensus estimate is 1% in this example. And then next year, of course, it's 10%, which, which coincidentally happens to be the estimated earnings and growth rate. But the point is we get this year's actual estimate next year's actual estimate, and then from this point forward, we grow it by the consensus five-year estimated growth rate that the analysts provide. Our second example, O'Reilly Automotive, Inc., gives a little more clarity to what we've just pointed out. This year's consensus estimated earnings are $4.65, representing a 20% growth rate over 2011's actual $3.88. Then there is a consensus forecast for $5.30, a precise number, for next year, which represents a 14% growth rate from the $4.65. The consensus of leading analysts are forecast 16.9%, which is rounded to 17%. You can see that the 17% is run after the second precise number is applied. The reason that this is so important is because logic would tell us that the, the closer the estimate is to the actual time frame, the more precise it might be. So when you're looking at these estimates, we tend to um, suggest that the, the subscriber focus more on these first two years, you know, the current year we're in and next year's estimate, and, and less on, you know, going out three to five years. However, we do believe that all of these numbers collectively together provide a reasonable proxy for what you might expect from a given company in terms of its future earnings growth not just because it's based on consensus analysts, but also because a significant portion of this number is provided by guidance from the company themselves. When interpreting how to use this graph, there's a couple little tips and tricks that um, we want to point out. First of all, we want you to notice that since this is an estimate, um, that we you know, obviously believe that it is hopefully reasonable and rational, but we ne could never expect it to be perfect. Therefore, Fast Graphs automatically creates what we call a value corridor. We supply two orange lines above and two orange lines below the consensus estimate line. And those are designed to create what we call a valuation corridor. So the idea is the subscriber should realize that, you know, these numbers represent kind of hopefully rational expectations, but they shouldn't be thought of as absolutely precise. But anytime the stock price is within these orange corridors, it would theoretically be at a reasonable value. Of course, if it's on the, um, you know, within the two above, as, as it is in O'Reilly, you could argue that it's moderately fully valued to even slightly overvalued. And of course, if you saw the price, you know, at these two bottom orange lines, you could argue that the stock was significantly undervalued all of that, of course, based on what the consensus estimates for this year, next year, and then the three, three to five year period following that actually are. But the point is, we're trying to provide a range of reasonableness here. And then these, the additional blue lines just provide different PE ratios. And you can look at the scale to the right of the forecasting chart and see what these lines represent. For example, the bottom line in this example represents eight and a half times earnings. The top line would represent 25 times earnings. So what we're saying is that if the price earner ratio expanded from its current 19.6 PE ratio, which you can see that very clearly in, in the fact that it's you know between these two orange lines right here, and the PE expanded up to 
you know, a, a 25 multiple, then the stock would be $118. And you can do that by just pointing to any of these dots throughout this graph. So if you go to the final dot here, what we're simply saying is that if the stock traded at a peg ratio PE, because this is above 15% growth of 16.9 by year end 2017, then the target price would be $167.56, assuming that you know earnings came in exactly as this chart was drawn. And that would represent a 13.3% compounded annual return, which would include dividends, if any. However, this particular example doesn't pay a dividend. Therefore, for clarity, let's add a company that does have a dividend. Let's look at Staples Corp. And this is an interesting example because I want you to notice that the consensus is forecasting a 1% drop, earnings going from $1.38, excuse me, $1.39 to $1.38 over last completed fiscal year. And notice that also the diamonds here indicate that Staples has a January 31st fiscal year, the diamonds and the dots. But what you really see here is a case where you have a relatively moderate to average growth rate of 16 of 6.8 percent forecast we're using a gram dodd modified peg ratio formula that gives us a 15 multiple indicating fair value which is the orange line but because the stock is undervalued you know this particular graph is forecasting that if if you went out here to um, 1231 2017 your price would um, represent uh, and actually you'd have to go one month past this but your price would would um, you know, that target price would represent a 21.5% compounded rate of return that also included dividend income. Let's now move on to the original McDonald's Corporation example we used and look at the 10-year earnings yield estimate or what we like to call the I chart, EYE, -E -E, earnings yield estimate chart. And that chart is, is actually, it's a mathematical representation of the picture of the estimated earnings and return calculator. And since McDonald's has a calendar fiscal year, we'll, this will make it a little easier to, to present here. We've got a target 10.4%, which indicates that McDonald's, uh, by 12-31-2007, grew earnings as expected, and, and therefore it would be you know, a target price of $130.67 at 15 times earnings from its $89.65, add in dividends, and that would equal a 10.4% compounded return. When we actually examine the I table, we see that number expressed. In order to state this a little more clearly, we want to point out that the value that you see by hitting this diamond out here at the end of the fiscal year that pops up, in this case 1231-2017, a price of $130.67, is the same value you see in the brown cell um, on the same date down here on the um, I chart, the earnings yield estimator chart. And what this says is that if, if the stock trades at this valuation here, $130, or target price, $130.67, assuming all these earnings um, estimates came to pass, then you would average a 10.4% compounded rate of return. But now let me show you something that's very important here. When you're looking at these first sales, I want you to notice um, that we still have the $5.40 or 1% earnings growth expectation here because, because you know, the, the um, Fastgrass puts the exact estimate for next for you know this fiscal year, and then it also puts the exact estimate for next fiscal year, and then it grows it by 10% a year. So in this example, McDonald's is going to have a you know um, um, a very modest growth rate this year. But the reality of it is that by 12:31/2012, based on you know the stock trading at 15 times its estimated earnings of five dollars and forty cents you know which you also see in this green column here uh, mcdonald's would be theoretically worth eighty one dollars a share at the end of the year and that's versus its current you know eighty nine dollars and sixty five cents value so that would represent an eighteen percent compounded annualized rate of return now this is important you got to remember that that or consider that that number only counts a few months you know the next three or four months of the year here, and that's why the, um, the, the the negative number looks so high. And then the following year, we're looking for 10% growth. So you know that would put the value at 89.25, which you again see in this sale. That would represent a 4.5% you know compounded annual rate of return from this point to this point, and then so on and so forth. As you go up the scale and hit these different diamonds here and get these different pop-up windows, you would see that you know the numbers correspond to what you see on the um, on the eye chart below. 118.79 cents would represent a 10.1 percent compounded annual rate of return assuming all these estimates were, were correct and the numbers came out 
you know, precisely as, um, as they were forecast. Now, another point that's very important that I mentioned earlier in the um, demo video, you also have the ability to override the estimates here. For example, if you thought a 10% growth rate was too aggressive and the McDonald's was only going to grow, let's say, at 6%, you could type the number six here in the override growth rate estimate, redraw the McDonald's chart by hitting the go button either at the top or the bottom of the, um, of the navigation bar, and now you've redrawn the chart with your own theoretical earnings growth rate. You still have the, the same $5.40 precise estimate for this year, the $5.95 for next year, but now from this point forward, notice that you're only growing earnings by 6% a year. And of course, that changes all of your factors and allows you to say, okay, what if it only grew by 6%, then my target rate of return would be a lot lower at 6% growth than it would be at 10% growth. And you know, vice versa, you could put in 15% growth if you thought the numbers were overly conservative. Just a, you know, a few other comments about the um, the earnings yield estimate table, remembering that it's the mathematics that is actually, you know, it takes this picture here and simply converts it into numbers. So you've got the earnings per share on this green column here. The first cell here shows how many shares you would have bought by investing $1,000 at, at, you know, at the current price. But then earnings would go from the 540 to the 595 as is, you know, these again, these are plug numbers. And then 10% growth would grow earnings continuously in this column. Dividends per share are assumed to grow at the growth rate of the earnings, which is this column. This gives you the total dividends on the number of shares that you would have bought with $1,000. And then this is a very important column because it gives you the, um, uh, this is, excuse me, cumulative earnings that you bought. This gives you the earnings yield. And, you know, an earnings yield, you know, above a treasury bond obviously would indicate that you've at least got some compensation for the risk you're taking. And currently, a 10-year treasury is only yielding about 1.6% as this video is produced. Then you have your current dividend yield, and this is growth yield. Some people refer to this as yield on cost. And then we have, you know, the estimated cumulative dividends on all the shares you have. And then we're, we're comparing both the cumulative earnings, which gives you a 5.1 ratio in this example. In other words, if McDonald's hits all these estimated targets, McDonald's would generate 5.1 times as much earnings as, um, as you would get in cumulative treasury bond interest, which would only be, you know, $160. And remember, this is on our 6% override that we put in here. If we go back to our default you know, McDonald's picture and redrew this, you would see that the, that the ratio goes up to six to one, where you have $961 of cumulative earnings versus that same $160 in a treasury bond. And then, of course, you have your estimated dividends, your target price that I've already covered. And then this simply compares that to um, interest rates, you know, whether or not you have, you know, how, how you stand relative to treasury. Now I put a picture up here of a, of a company that appears to be overvalued based on the stock trading outside of its earnings quarter, Tractor Supply, because I wanted you to see um, how the, um, a, another aspect of the I chart or the earnings yield chart. What we show here, we show this company does pay a dividend, okay, but th when, when the column is pink like it is here, this is indicating that it takes this many years where it won't until the year 2018, where the total dividends here would equal what you were getting risklessly in the treasury bond. Um, and you get the same concept with yield and estimated dividends. So when you see the lines pink like this, this is simply saying, or, you know, it's kind of light red is another way I like to look at it. It's simply saying that, that you know, in the beginning, you know, your dividend yield, which is only eight tenths of 1% is less than the 1.6% on the treasury bond. And, it's, and, and the cumulative dividends would not equal what you'd get on a treasury bond until year end 2018, although they would, you know, begin exceeding a treasury bond probably by 2016, where the yield is 1.7 versus the 1.6. But that's why, why you see these different color co codes here. That's to give you an indication of, um, you know, how long it's going to take you to become into parity with a 10-year treasury bond. So that's the forecasting chart we call it, or the estimated earnings and return calculator in a picture and in numbers. And there's, um, you know, it's, it's designed to help you um, make decisions. Remember, you can always run overrides and run your own calculations, as many what-if scenarios as you can. But the idea here is to try to give you a sense of valuation. And finally, as I've already stated, it's important, we believe, to focus more on this particular graph than it is to worry to, to focus on the forecasting graph because you know earnings growth rates can change dramatically. In the case of tractor supply here, the historical growth has been 22.4%, but the forecast is 18.7. 
So, you know, even though it looks overvalued in both cases, it's technically more overvalued in this particular graph because, you know, they're forecasting a lower growth rate than going forward. But that, again, may or may not be true. That's up to the um, subscriber's own judgment to decide for themselves.